How quickly can you regrip a racket? The challenge is on. Let's put the timer on. Ready? Go. So you can examine my worksmanship. If like me, you play a lot of tennis, the chances are your grip is gonna get dirty. So in this video, I'm gonna teach you how to change your overgrip quickly. So the first thing we're gonna do is take off the overgrip. Now, your racket will usually come with a little rubber protection here to keep the end of the, 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 the grip tight onto the racket. Sometimes you don't, you'll just have the tape. So uh, I'm gonna get the tape off and get my grip my overgrip off the racket so underneath the overgrip usually you'll have the base grip and that's got a really sticky underside and it's a thicker grip it's not what we're changing right now we're simply changing the thin overgrip now the overgrip will have a, a rough side so on the underneath and a slightly softer side a more tacky side on the top and that's the side that you want your your hand to face you want the grip facing out with the tacky side so i'm removing my overgrip and sometimes you'll get uh, some bits of your overgrip stick onto your base grip. Now it doesn't matter if it happens because you're going to be covering it anyway. If you want to be particular you can also get it off maybe with some warm water but I, I don't even bother because I changed my overgrip so much it doesn't really matter. So now that I've got my overgrip off you can see my base grip on the racket and actually you can see that the base grip because they apply it from one side and they start to put the overgrip on the, the base grip on you can see that the base grip is slightly wider so the grip is slightly wider on one side than the, the other you can see a bulking out this bulge here is bigger than on the other side and that's important because this indicates to me where I'm gonna start my overgrip I like to even it out so I'll start my overgrip on the other side and therefore now it's gonna be even for my hand to hold on either side if you start on the same side you're gonna have a really bulky end and a really flat end and personally I don't like it so I like to start on the other side so now that we know where we're gonna start the overgripping process it's time to get our overgrip out so I've got a nice red overgrip here for you uh, it comes with a little plastic bit uh, the plastic tape which we're going to use later and I'll unwind the overgrip now here quickly we can see that the underside of the overgrip over here we can see that it's rough and then the other side is actually really shiny and the reason it's shiny is because it's covered with a protective film now this protective film is usually applied onto the overgrip in order to stop it from drying when it's being, you know, when it's in the shop. So we want to get that, that, that plastic tape off it so that we can reveal the nice tacky side of the overgrip. So I'll get it completely off. So here we can see the tacky side and the rough side. And I know that the rough side is what's gonna go onto my grip. Now you can see that the overgrip also has a little uh, corner here where it's uh, got a little bit of tape. So when you remove that protective tape, it's gonna be sticky underneath. And that's a great way to start because that sticky part, you can now start in at the slightly less bulkier edge of your um, base grip. It's actually easier to regrip a racket sitting down, I find. So I'm going to be sitting down. I'm going to put my racket straight onto the ground like this. Uh, I've got my grip pointing up. I've got my sticky side of the grip, of the overgrip ready. And I'm going to apply that sticky side onto that slightly uh, less bulgy side of the uh, underside of, of the base grip. So I know that I'm applying it here. I'm going to start it here. And I'm looking to not go too um, not to have too much of an overlap here because otherwise the grip is going to start fraying in your bag and so on so if I ha if I start too high and I start my overgrip process like this and you have a, a big overhang if you see here that's going to fray that's going to start destroying your grip so you don't want to do that but you also don't want to me personally for example I don't like 
having the plastic dig into my hand and that's why you see a lot of players have those calluses you have the the, the, the blisters here and that's what it's created from from those edges of the plastic of the bottom of the grip so when we're holding the grip usually the grip goes into your hand here in the bottom so I quite like it to be soft in that area and therefore I would like that plastic part covered with my overgrip so it's important that I really line up that first the, the first sticky part I line it up with exactly the the edge I guess of uh, the top of the racket and I start to pull with my thumb so my thumb here is the one that's controlling that overgrip it's pulling the overgrip across and I'm securing the racket with my left hand so the racket is being rotated by my left hand and my thumb here is controlling where that tape where the overgrip goes now if I go too high I can still change it as long as I'm applying pressure here I'm going to be able to continue to, to, to um, do my overgripping so now that I've got my first my first circle my first layer done I can assess now I've got my left hand my left thumb is controlling it I can assess yep I've got a good edge here it's not sticking out too much but it's also covering all of those plastic edges and here you'll also see a ridge so every overgrip will have a little ridge there where it's almost like an indicator where you'll start to it gives you an indication when to start to go down and you don't want to go down too quickly if you go down of too much of an angle you'll end up having a lot of um, base grip showing so you want to be consistently covering that base grip without going down too quickly but also leaving enough space to give about a two millimeter overlap now the bigger the overlap the bigger the grip will feel in your hand because obviously the thickness of the overgrip you're, you're adding onto the thickness of the base grip so I like to give it only a two millimeter overlap so the grip doesn't feel too bulky in my hand so I'll start to go down slowly still controlling with my uh, with my right hand my right thumb and here I can actually use even the floor so I can go down I can put the racket onto the floor and I can rotate the racket it becomes a lot easier because I don't have to hold the racket I simply rotate it you can even hold it at the top and all I'm doing is controlling with my thumb and I'm rotating the racket with my left hand so it becomes very easy for me to to overgrip to continue overgripping so it's important that you also know if you're a left-hander or a right-hander so left-handers overgrip their racket differently to right-handers so the the way that the the racket the the grip skews so it, it goes down this way for a, a left-hander it'll go down the opposite way and instead of controlling it with my right hand I'll be doing the opposite I'll be doing it with my left hand and I'll be rotating the racket the opposite way now some players prefer to uh, overgrip their racket like a left-hander and they're right-hander so it's all a preference so you have to decide how you would like to overgrip your racket I like to keep it the same so right-hander with a right-handed overgripping method and I keep going down overgripping that racket so we can do it on the floor and actually it becomes really really quick to overgrip all I'm doing is twisting that racket and my thumb is controlling that overlap now when I reach the end here I don't like to have this square here it's, it's this edge it looks a little bit untidy so what I like to do is I like to fold this edge over so here you can see I've folded the top edge over so it continues that line of the overgrip before the layer before so it continues going down so you can actually just fold it over some players like to cut it but then you need scissors with you and a lot of the time you'll actually have quite a big uh, well a lot of grip left over so you could end up at the end of the you know you're over gripping you might be left for example I'll just do a rough one for you just to show you and actually the the less overlap you have the more you left over of the grip you'll have as well so you can see here I've got a lot of uh, grip left over here so from here you can either choose to over grip and make a big kind of uh, to bunch it up at the end I see a lot of players doing that I personally don't like doing that so I anticipate that that's going to happen at the end so somewhere maybe midway through my over gripping process I will start to 
make the overlaps a little bit bigger. Now, as I said, it does make your grip bigger. So myself, I'm a single-handed backhand player, so for me, it doesn't matter so much. It may annoy you, so you may need to cut that bit at the end. But if you are a one-handed player, then it might be easy for you to just um, start to bunch it up so you have a slightly bigger overlap. So you might start with a two millimeter overlap and now I'm going a little bit more, a little bit more. So every time I have more of a, maybe a, a one centimeter overlap. So almost half of the, the length of the, the, the width of the grip is being overlapped. Now you don't want to go more than half because then you'll get something like a triple overlap where you're still overlapping the, the layer before. So you don't want to do that. But you can see here, it still looks quite tidy, but I finished a lot earlier. I now don't have uh, a lot of uh, excess overgrip. So it's something for you to note. Now at the end, of course, when you're ready, when you're ready to finish the overgrip, like let, let me do it how I would normally for myself. So. And you can see how quick it is to just rotate that racket and finish here at the end. I do my overlap, the little fold at the end, and now I'm ready to secure the overgrip with the little tape that was provided with the overgrip. And then once again, you don't want to give too much tension here but you also want a little bit of that tape to go over the top of the overgrip and almost secure it onto the racket itself as well. So I, I quite like it to be quite firmly on there. And then you just stick it completely on and now you have your overgrip. And now that little rubber overside can go over the top as well. So that little rubber ring can go over the top to hide maybe the tape. So here it is in close up. So you can see one edge is less bulky here. So I'm gonna start on this edge here. I'm gonna put my finger, my left finger on here, my left thumb. Now I wanna make sure that this doesn't go too high. You may have to control that part from, from slipping. Let me give a little bit of tension here. as we reach that little ridge that we talked about and we can see that it's nice and neat here so there's no overhang it's nice and neat and then we start to gradually go down giving a little bit of overhang That uh, overlap. That my thumb here is pulling and it's securing that grip onto the racket. So now here I've reached, I've got a little bit of access. So I'm gonna go back. I'm gonna make a little bit more overlap here. Like so. And now I can fold over the edge. And I'm ready to tape it up and go ahead. So there we have it, we have a nice overgrip done here. Now, personally, I don't like to start with doing my overgrip, starting with that little, um, the small edge. And I'll explain why. So when we started the, the racket, we started with that thin edge of the overgrip. And it started over here, and, and we started on the less bulky side of the underside of the grip. So, what it does now is, when I go over, there's very little of that overlap here to really affect the 
the bulge of the other side so it doesn't really do too much so what I'd like to do is to actually start with the completely opposite end so you actually start with the thicker side of the grip and you find that less bulky edge and you start to go down so I've got I've started with a thicker edge and now it's evened out both of the sides of that grip. Now some pros actually like to make that bulky bottom part of the grip a lot thicker. And the reason they do that is when we hold the racket, we hold the racket with mostly the bottom side, the bottom fingers. So the, the bottom fingers go at the bottom of the racket and that's what slips into this little ridge here on the racket. Now, a lot of players like to keep their racket from slipping, especially if it gets hot. So some of the pros like to have this bottom part more built up, a little bit more of a thicker, almost ring there at the bottom. And we can do that with our overgrip. So you can also try it. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fold this overgrip like so. So now I'm folding the overgrip. I'm creating a thin overgrip, but now it's double the thickness here. And again, I'm gonna start at the slightly thinner, the, the slightly less bulky end. And I'm gonna to start to put it put it on the racket like so. So now we should have one layer, so one ring like this where we've got a thicker end here. And I can do this a few times. If I want to build it up more, I can go over again and the every extra layer that you put on is now creating an extra uh, thicker part, thicker bottom for you. And now you gently start to roll out that overgrip. So before it was folded in half, you start to gently roll out more and more and more of it. Now you'll have a slight crease where you've done that so you will have a little bit of a crease in that area and that's okay that's expected but now you can see that we have a really thicker end there at the bottom so you can actually now have your fingers again it helps if you have that one of those longer grips because you you know the more you overlap here the less you're gonna have at the end so if you're a single-handed player like myself it doesn't really matter, but you know, if you have one of those longer grips, uh, I know Wilson produced a longer one, but here you can see that my finger now slips into that area here and it's not gonna fly out of my hand when the, uh, you know, during those hot conditions. So some players really like to have that slight, slight bulkiness there at the end of their overgrip. And they do that with the way they regrip the racket. So they do that from the start. And you can also use, instead of maybe folding it, you can put some old uh, overgrip there and then go over normally so then you wouldn't have that folding effect you can also do that again it requires a little bit more time but like this you know it gives you that freedom to do it um, yeah and, and, and for me personally when I start with a slightly thicker end it does just enough to even out both of the sides and then I can finish nice and tidy there at the end and uh, and then I'm ready to go so let me just finish off this grip and show you how it looks So now I'm over gripping it. There we go. And now once I've got it going, all I'm doing is controlling it with my thumb and rotating with my left hand. So it becomes nice and easy and quite quick to put on this over grip. And actually, a good thing there at the end is you also have your sticky end, the sticky side that goes and secures it at the end. So you actually don't even need tape, but you know, if, if I want to apply that extra tape um, that I had, well, that, that I destroyed earlier, you can then also apply that, uh, that tape over the top. There we go. 
and then obviously my rubber ring can go on the end and there we have it and my overgrip here it's all done it's all ready now the tighter you pull it the the more firm it will sit now some pro players actually use overgrips to build up their grip size so you can put two or three overgrips on top of a base grip to take your grip to the next size but the grip will feel a lot more rounded because you won't be able to feel the ridges those edges of the racket of the grip you won't be able to feel it quite as much, you'll feel softer, but much more rounded. Now on the other hand, some players prefer to feel the racket in the hand a lot more. I almost give you the feel of that leather grip uh, of the old rackets, uh, and they do that by taking off the base grip, which is a bit softer, and using simply an overgrip or two overgrips on top of just the racket. And that way, you'll feel the ridges a lot more, but it's less forgiving on the hand, so be prepared to get a lot more blisters. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you subscribe to the channel, make sure you press the like button, and let me know uh, under the video which way do you overgrip your rackets. Anyway, I hope to see you soon. All the best. Alex from Top Tennis Training.